Alright students, welcome back. Uh, today I'm going to do an action pose position and I'm going to turn it into a finished picture which you have probably seen on the thumbnail. Yeah. So, because I've been showing you guys the, with the new technique with the 21st century stick man and other ways to draw the body parts and so forth and so on. So I said, okay, it's time to put some of this stuff together to show so that you guys can see that it works and so that you guys can do it as well. So again, when you start, you want to start out with the torso because the torso is almost the most action-y part. You know, you, you, there's no action in the knee, there's no action in the elbow or the foot or whatever. It's the torso that lines up everything. It's gonna be facing you right there with the, the huge pecs, you know, and the shoulders, you know, just, you know, just round, um, what do you call those things? Delts and so forth. Yeah, it's it's the torso that does that. It twists a little bit to, to allow the hand to come up further or, or right in your face. So that's the thing that you want to do first. You don't want to do that head first. You want to get that torso so that you will have the right size head to put on that torso. So, all right. So this is what we're going to do. I'm going to do this. You want also we want to, when you do this, or when I do this, I make sure that However, my feet are going, I have enough space to put there so it won't go off. And I also have enough room for the head. So, but for some strange reason, I tend to draw the same size. I don't know why. It's just, it's just, it's just me. All right, so you want to get that ovalish, circle ovalish. Then you want to get your center line. So I'm going to have this guy turn to the side a little bit like that. And I'm going to, he's going to be leaning over. I'm going to have this the collarbone so the, the more of a v you have the more that person is leaning over it'll be straight if he's looking at you and he tilts over tilts over tilts over like that until you have that you know hardcore v and this is the only time that i will put the head on not last is when i have somebody tilted over because i want to find out how much i want to bring his head down into that into his shoulders so we're gonna do this, and all this is subject to change. So whenever I have somebody lean down, I'll have the chest and the delts, yeah, uh, one piece. So example, we get a piece of paper. If I'm drawing somebody straight forward, you know, I'll do the collarbone, then I'll do the delts. I'll do these separate center line, then I'll do the chest, and then I'll connect though the chest up under that the delt but when i lean it forward i kind of like to do one whole piece so if i'm leaning somebody forward and let's just say this is the collarbone i'll put the delt here and just continue around kind of like making that one piece it's just it's easier so and i'm drawing slow whenever i draw slow i i i um tighten up so and it's been a minute since i drew probably couple days since I actually drew so I don't want it to get tight and I'm gonna I don't want to have his shoulders up he's gonna shoulders gonna be more down which means that the delt is gonna be down that's what I'm trying to say the delts are gonna be down and because he's leaning forward I'm gonna bring that chest like that and I was supposed to be doing the 21st century stick man. What happened, Brian? I don't know. So we're gonna have that V, you're gonna have his neck here, that V, not gonna go all the way up because he's leaning, because that hole for your head is like right in here. So we're gonna have that neck here and it depends on how much that head comes down. And this is my rough, really rough sketch. And as I say, because I haven't drawn in a, in a while, I am really rough. And when you lean, your delts, your delts, you have three parts to your delts. You have this one here, you have a middle one, and you have one in the back like that. So if you're leaning forward, you have one here, one here, and one that goes way in the back. So anytime you lean forward, like here we have, like here, I'll bring the delts over, and then my delts will start right here. You won't see the part in the back, but when you lean forward, you kind of like, Put that line right there in the middle, and this is going to be my delt right here. Let me get a brush, pen, something. So it's going to be like this. This is the chest. This is the collarbone. It's going to end right here. This is that delt right there in the center. 
Again, I'll bring my chest like this. Same thing, center, collarbone, and then it's gonna be your back, and then you put your head down accordingly. All right, so got this. So let's continue with that. So I'm gonna use this again. This is gonna be the hips. So that's gonna be like an oval, almost a, a drum. That's the only thing I can think of. It's not, it's a cylinder, but cylinders are more straight like this. So I kind of call this like a drum, like a, like a speaker, the kind of speakers you get. I don't know what the JBC or whatever had those big old K kind of speakers right there. So you always want this line in the middle, this center line to come down, no matter how much is turned. If it's turned and you're seeing this much and it's like this side and like this guy, is, this is facing this way. And somebody asked me about how do we, how would you use that in a turn? It would just like that. Here's my turn here, here's my rib cage, and this is where it would turn at, so it would go right to the middle of that. Always put that in the middle, which would be more over here because it's turned that way. Hate to draw on my final paper because sometimes it just doesn't come out. So we're going to do that, and it's, we're going to have this is the V come down here, leaving some room for the man junk. And then we're going to come down and connect these two. So he's leaning forward, more of an upshot. So I might want to bring this back some because I want it more of an upshot. So doing an upshot or a downshot or an upshot, let me fix this back again. You have to stack stuff on top of one another. So if I do this, let's just say if I do this here and I want more of a down shot, yeah, then I will stick something there and then stick something there. So it's gonna be more down and if I'm looking at it from the top, you'll see that it's gonna be a foot here, foot here, arm there, arm there. So you'd have to do the same thing with this. This can't really be, it can, but it won't be so much of a down shot. It'll be more him leaning forward and standing on the flat ground. So you just bring it closer. And then you bring there into there. And then I can bring my legs from the top to the bottom. So I'm getting, I'm getting, I'm getting, what is it? I'm getting stiff again, because it's the same. It's been a minute since I really, 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 really drew, drew, so. Oh man, I got, I'm gonna put something on his back too. I forgot about that. Yeah. It may still work. If not, I'll scrap it and do it all over again. Have a down shot, so. You're gonna see some stomach too. This could be a little closer, depending on how much of a down shot I want. I can bring it, it's really close to the chest anyway. So the more, the more it tilts, the less you will see or the closer it's gonna be. And then that stomach is gonna come around because this whole thing is round. So let's just say this one here, this one here. And I'm gonna cover it up with clothes anyway. So what I'm doing right now is just, what are you doing right now? I'm showing you kind of like the basic, the basic form because I want to photocopy this and then redraw on this and keep the photocopy for, as a, a type of a reference. So you won't see this dealt because he's twisted that way. And I can adjust that leg a little bit. Keep that crotch, that waist is gonna come down into this, or those, those, those um, love handles are gonna come down into your hips, his hips. And then I want this one foot to be like right here. Give, maybe give him a little calf, and then this foot is gonna be right here. So this other one is gonna be 
down. So to do that, I do this circle, put that in the back, this is in the front. She's leaning. So I want to bring that more forward. Or I could bring that leg up. Let's see, just make it more forward. As I said, it's been a minute, so kind of stiff. You are looking down at him though, so that is going to give him that, that going back kind of look. But, 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 it needs to be at an angle. That is what's wrong. All right, so I had to stop it for a second so I can readjust it. And I walked, I walked away for a second, which is what you should always do. If you can't figure it out, walk away. And when it comes back, it's going to make sense. It should make more sense. Now, what I want to do here, is I'm going to drop this down. I'm going to bring this down even more, which means that chest comes down even more, which means it's going to cover up some of those abs, at least part of the abs. These are kind of going to stay the same. So I'm going to bring it like this. Try this. I'm going to try this. So I'm going to bring this down some more to kind of like, and I can't show you because you won't, you can't see my shoulders. Almost like he's pulling those delts forward. So the chest is going to be here and here, and that neck is going to be here and here, and I'm going to drop that head down even more. those traps right there that go right up in the back of your neck and I look at it in the monitor and I am kind of happy with it so that's gonna be here that's gonna be here you have those traps right here your delts right here let me put the arms there it'll make more sense Wow for the idea that I'm, I'm wanting to do, I'm thinking maybe it's too big, all, all, but we'll see, we'll see. So this one I want coming back as well, but it's going to come out a little bit more. And the thing is, I, I, I think I might have said, I'm going to dress this guy. So, a lot of it is going to be a waste of time doing the muscles. But for the sake of teaching, it's not a waste of time. So this one is going to be up here and this one, because one is actually higher than the other, but for the one, what am I saying? Okay, you have a leg. Let's do this. Let's do this. Here's this leg and here's this leg. You have this middle middle piece right here that kind of dips down. So this one kind of curves around and comes up back here like a teardrop, okay? So if you follow this line here, it's just a teardrop with extra. And then you have the knee that fits between, but one comes down further than the other. One is higher and one comes further than the other and actually comes off. If this is my line, I would have to come off, especially off of this line, especially if he was 
a muscular guy. So this comes up, this one comes up here too. I'm gonna do that. And it makes a V, it has a V like this inside of it. So it goes up here, this one curves up and you have this V that goes up, up, <clears throat> up to the waist. So, so I did that all over again. And I do believe it is the inside. You know how sometimes your mind just, just goes away from you. So you have your knee here, you have your legs. So let me just draw it. It's gonna come down like this, back up, teardrop. This other one is gonna come down lower and up like that. And then you have that part of your leg. You have this on the outside, this one goes to your ankle. You have your calf here, you have a little bit of this here, and then you have the other side of your calf. But it does make this kind of a V that your knees fit in. So I guess what I'm saying is just keep them both the same size, keep them the same distance down. It's, it's that side. No, it, it is the inside. What am I doing? It's the inside that goes, it's bone comes and your, your ankle is right there. So this goes like this. This one comes here like that, and it gives you that little curve for your, your for your for your leg, which looks good. And then you have your foot like that, but you all you have this little piece of meat that curves in like that. And then you have this, and then this that gives you that V right there. So yeah, keeping the same size, but just for the sake of, of anatomy, one is longer than the other, and I do believe the inside is. I'm going to have to check. Before the end of the video, I will let you know. All right, so we have this. And again, I'm going to, I'm going to dress this guy so that, and I, I, I can't ink it because this is the one that I want to erase and put clothes on. So I'm going to get as close as I can. And he's going to have something in his hands, both hands. So for now, I'm just going to do a fist. You can do one, two, three, it, curve it around, curve it around, three and four. And let's get a pencil. Make it a little easier for you guys to see, maybe, maybe. So I always do the square, where's my paper again? I always do my square if I'm doing a fist, depending on the angle of that fist. Kind of curve this, I do my little thing for the thumb and then you could do your fingers. One, two, three, four curve it and then you see some of that palm and some of the other palm now this finger is shorter so you're gonna it's gonna be bent right here and you're gonna see that part and then you might see the under parts of the rest of the fingers because if you look you see how this one actually sticks up this finger because it's actually shorter I put a put a line across here it's gonna be like that and these kind of curve I can't I can't I can't look at the camera and do it <laughs> this curves and this curves. So instead of doing a square fist, you want to curve that fist. You want to curve that fist. And this knuckle is going to come up higher. It's going to come down. Down like that. Then I will put my thumb here. You see a little bit of palm and palm there. And maybe a little bit there, depending, depending on What's the word? Depending on uh, how close you are drawing the fist. Yeah, how close you're drawing the fist. How close you are seeing the fist because this little piece of meat right here, you see that? This little piece of meat comes out. So it depends on how much you, are, how close the fist is to you. And then something else, your lines don't come all the way up to that. And it took me a long time to see that. I saw a video and I was like, wow, it was just a, a, a hand anatomy. And I'm like, wow, because most people draw their lines all the way up and they don't come all the way up, almost a little above the middle, these little separations. And then you have your knuckles here. And how did this become a hand drawing tutorial? Because somebody asked me to do an updated hand drawing, but it's really hard to do that because the hand takes on so many forms and shapes. So you can't watch something and Somebody said, this is how you draw a hand. This is how you draw that particular hand, but not a hand. A hand, yeah, okay, a hand, but maybe not the hand you want, or maybe not the position you want. But basically, it's a square. One, two, three, one, two, three, 
four, so three hand, three hand. I'll stick another one up in here. And then bring that thumb up. Okay, because I'm gonna twist those hands to um, hold that trigger. So you've seen it, you already saw the thing. I'm gonna have the guns on the guy's shoulders, the big guns and the wires, and he's gonna be holding the kind of like the little trigger switch, the wire's gonna be hooked to that. You've seen it already in the thumbnail, but you might have not really seen it. And then of course, gear him up with his, you know, his Assassin Creed gear or whatever kind of gear. And I'm gonna look in some the books that I have I think the video before this one was reference, use it, references everywhere, use it. So that's one reason why I bought some of these books so I can get some better backgrounds. So I get some good, better ideas for the backgrounds. So he's going to probably be looking up. And bring that down a little bit more. So, okay, twist that. So let's just say the top is going to be right here. You won't see that. You won't see that that arch and the third one here and it goes down so the love handle is going to be here love handle is going to be here i can probably bring this out a little bit more and love handle is going to be here so i need to detail this more i'm going to detail this more off camera and then show you because I don't want to copy this and then it's not really completely detailed done and then go from a not completely detailed done to redrawing and making something out of this guy because it's got too many lines in it. So I'm going to cut it now. I'm going to detail this guy to where I can copy it and be happy with it. The hand is too small and then I'll come back in a second. Here we go. All right, so here we are with the finished red pencil clean. This is about as clean as I'm going to get it. Version fairly detailed. Now, if you're just trying to draw an action position with the muscles and, and just the body, this is where you need to stop. But any position you look at, you should say to yourself, okay, what can I do with this? If you're drawing, just, if you have a, a picture of just plain, like if there's a Superman, you'd be like, okay, well, that's Superman position. If it's Batman, it's Batman position. But you can also draw that position without drawing Batman or Superman and say, what can I do with that to kind of make it mine? And that's what you should be doing if you have a character, especially if you have a character of your own. Everything you draw should be based on your own character and not just drawing Superman, Batman. They've got enough advertising out there for them anyway, because when somebody looks at YouTube and say, how to draw Batman, there's another one, how to draw Batman. This is how you draw Batman. So you want to make it different. You want to start drawing different stuff. So anyway, I'm going to photocopy this and then use this original so I can erase and then add some gear to the guy. So be back in a second. All right, scan is complete. So this is the copy. So let me get this guy out the way and we'll start with this cat. Let me get a blue pencil so that I can know what I'm doing with him. Now, I had a, um, a basic idea of what I wanted. I did a kind of a rough, actually last night and I'm gonna kind of look something like that you know this is just the basic rough idea that I want for this guy because the position I was saying that'd be a good position for him to have you know some couple big guns on his back so I'm gonna just do some roughs and then either I'm gonna speed it up for the detail because I'm I don't know what kind of detail I'm gonna put on it so this is just gonna kind of be blocky and then, uh, like I said, either might speed it up for that or just cut it completely. And come back with the finished product. My mind stopped. My brain stopped because I'm in the midst of thinking. So as I say, when I have the big guns on his back, the barrels, I don't know what kind of barrels I'm going to have. Don't have to be long because I was afraid it wouldn't fit in the, in the thing. It's going to be strapped around him. So that is going to have to come over his shoulder. So it's going to be like this and then go down around there. Again, can you see this? Yeah, good, 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 good. Strap 
can go around down there. Maybe a strap across the chest because it has to hold. And see what I'm saying about um, covering up? So if you're going to draw a character and you know, you know, you know you're going to put clothes on them, don't try to get every muscle in there. Do not. Especially, if you, like I said, you're going to put clothes on this cat. So, you know, you're wasting your time. You could have had your picture drawn long ago. Of course, you're going to have a belt down here. And then he's going to have his gear on his belt. But since he's leaning forward, that's going to kind of mess that gear up a little bit. So I'm going to make him small. The little casings, I don't know what you call those. I don't know how many he's going to have. Either way, um, I'm going to have what I have. I had a strap on one leg, on both legs, actually. But this is like a bigger bigger piece which I don't know what it is what it could be ammo I don't know I don't know ammo could be fed from this and that one but I have something else on this leg here remember to make that round because the leg is round so I mean if I wanted to be all detail I would actually curve it in curve it out curve it up curve it down like that but for the sake of time I'm not so this is gonna be a bigger strap something on there and right here so we're gonna have one two maybe three little things here across his leg and of course he's gonna have the boots um, shirt that I think I had a wrist wristbands on him just for now we'll we, uh, we'll see some kind of metal bands I, I was thinking of having his shirt uh, rolled up sleeve rolled up what kind of boots are you going to have? Is this going to be more military style, like um, uh, fabric, or is it going to be skin tight kind of stuff? And I, I'm thinking more military fabric kind of with wrinkles and so forth. But of course, it's all comic booky. So, and then let's do this because he's going to have the boots. The same for the other side. And something, it took me a minute to discover that if you have boots, let's just say if this is a foot, let me draw a foot, Brian, this is a foot, you have a shoe on, they always have a little piece, a little sewn piece here, and then they have your heel there. And I used to just draw the heel right there on the, at the bottom, but yeah, they have this little piece. I guess it's to glue the actual shoe to the heel, on the heel to the shoe. Uh, I don't know, but yeah, just a little detail for you guys. Um, strap, strap, of course, you're going to be hooked under here. So I have to move that. It's going to be hooked under here. So I'm going to have this kind of... Uh, Thing. So again, as I said, I have, to, I have to move that, bring it up a little bit more, which means there's going to be a hook here, so I can bring that up a little bit more. And again, as I said, this is just rough. This is rough until I get it, and then I'm going to have the kind of thing in his hand, the little trigger, the little gun trigger. I don't know how I'm going to design it, but it's going to be in his hand. He's be holding it and his finger is going to be up more. It's going to come up because it's going to be holding that trigger. Same thing here. It's going to something short and this part is going to come down. And of course the finger has got to be right here because he's holding that trigger. He's pulling that trigger actually because the gun is firing. And then I'm going to have the wire connect from here to the gun without doing a, I think it was a tan, tangent, 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 when you have one line going across another line and you can't really um, differentiate the two lines. So tangent, I can have it going down here and coming up here like into his leg. So again, I have no idea what I'm going to do. I'm going to look through some books 
for some just some design elements like you know some different things I can do with the belt reference is everywhere use it this should curve around because this is around and it's going behind his leg so curve that around I know a lot of people don't do that they'll kind of just that and that's it but it's got to go around his leg so if I'm doing this It's, got, it's going to get thinner up here. It's going to get narrower up here to show that it's going down and behind, behind that. So same thing here. It's going to get narrower. And you basically you want to keep on drawing that thing into that arm. And it makes it look like it goes all the way around. Instead of just like this. This is just, this is just quick like that. It's got to go all the way around. Uh, what else did I say? He's going to have pants on. So, of course, you're going to have the little zipper part and the, the wrinkles and all that will be done off camera or speed it up. I want to figure out maybe, um, I don't know, around his, around his wrist, wrist, what is this? What is this? Bicep. For what? No other purpose than looking cool, I guess. And like I said, a shirt, I, you know, I have no idea. And then we're going to get my mask. It's kind of like, this is going to be the targeting system and he's going to have like glasses for his eyes but they're some kind of gargles so these three are one but we will see we we will see we will see we will see so i am going to cut this right here and then find me some good reference stuff to give some detail and i want something this might be well it's gonna be a shirt anyway so it's gonna be covered up so at this point I'm gonna find some reference and I'll be back for you in a second for me it might be tomorrow because it's kind of late all right I'm back and it's only been a second once I stood up to cut my camera off this guy reminds me of the new gods the, the new god the guy that flies around I don't know I'm not a new god person but it just reminded me and he's got these little things under his feet and I want to say he's got something I don't know but for whatever reason, that just reminded me of that. So, he's not, though. Yeah, anyway, all right. All right, so it has been two days now since I last touched this. Or well, since since you saw the last part. And this, I've been just tweaking a little bit here, a little bit there. And this is what I've come up with. So, what I'm going to do is ink it. I'm going to start inking it. Then I'm going to speed ink. And then I'm just going to cut to the finished product because it is like 10 25 p.m now it is late and i'm tired so i'm not really going to touch it today but i just wanted to show you this so that i can move on from here all right so we're going to start the inking i'm not going to start it now but for you it's going to be i'm going to start it all right all right so before i start inking let's talk about inking uh it is best to ink with the smallest pen you have first. I always do the 005s, 005, because it's the same as a pencil point. You don't want to um, start drawing with a pencil that's dull. You want the sharpest point you can get. That way you can get your detail going. So this is why I always do this with the, um, I start with that so I can get in those cracks and crevices to get the best detail I can get. And, uh, and later on, you can come back and you can use a thicker marker to get some line weight or just go over it again with this particular um, pen. So for all of you out there that's like uh, inking with like a Sharpie or just a thick pen, don't do that because what you have is, and I'm trying to look around for something. Let's just use this. What you have is just a drawing, one drawing, with you know one same you know particular line that is just boring but if you have something with different line weights then it looks a little better because you have your line weight to go with it and it stands out more to when somebody sees that because your eyes are always attracted to the black in something, the darkest area in something. That's why a lot of artists always use a lot of shading. I don't have any, I don't have anything that can, I can show you guys. 
I have something, but it doesn't belong to me, and I don't want to show it to a drawing that I did, and I don't want to show it. But yeah, trust me, that's why you see it. They, they put a lot of shading and shadow in into the drawing because that's what the eyes attracted to. But you don't want to use one one size pin, so always use a little thinner one, and then you go from there. So I want to get just a little bit of light on the subject so I can see better. And another thing is I was going to try to put some background into this, but it's taking me too long to do it. And if I do any kind of drawing that just takes over several days, I kind of get bored with it. And because my brain is always like, move on, move on, because there's always something else that is on my mind to do. And always check before you start inking, because once you start inking, it's final. That page, that picture is final. So whatever mistakes you have in there are going to stay unless you do white out and try to do it again. And I can point out a couple mistakes that I see already, but I'm not going to because an artist should not point out his or her mistakes. Let the people think that you're just great. So anyway, <laughs> um, I'm going to fast motion this. I think that was about all I wanted to say is about, about inking. Use your small pen first then come back with a bigger pen. Don't ever tape your paper down because when you ink, you wanna pull. You, it's best to pull every line, pull every line. Even when you're doing circle lines, you want to just pull it, that one little thin line and you wanna turn your paper. So don't ever tape your paper down. I worked for um, an art school and he would have the students tape their papers down when they inked. And that was like, I, you know, he was paying me so I couldn't really say, or, or just kind of like go against what he, you know, was doing because he mar he worked for Marvel for a minute, but he didn't, he was not an artist. He was more on the, the, the um, files and paper kind of administrative kind of stuff. So yeah, I couldn't, couldn't do that to him. Would have made him look bad. But anyway, as you see, I'm doing, I'm turning for every line that I do, I'm turning it in order to be able to pull my paper, my pen and not push. You ever, don't ever push it. You just pull it. You, even, you know, if you're doing circles, if you're doing a circle, just kind of pull it a little bit, turn your paper, pull it a little bit more, pull it a little bit more. That's why I hate doing circles with pens because they never come out all the way around like I, I, I want them, but... This is how you do, because if you try to push it, where the paper go again? If I'm trying to push a circle, it's not gonna work. Whereas if I'm, if I'm pulling one, I'll have a better circle. So yeah. So I can't think of anything else right now that I wanna say. So I'm going to fast motion this just a little bit, maybe a minute or so, and then I'm gonna cut to the finished edge and as I said I, did I say that I don't know I wanted to do a background like some kind of army tank that was all shot up or some kind of ground I might just put a line to establish the ground but it would have took away from this if I drew like a shot up tank or whatever you know so I'm not gonna do a background and like I said if it takes me a couple of days I get bored so at this point I'm just gonna speed it up and we'll go from there
right, here we are with the semi-finished product. Uh, right away, let me say, I don't like the beard. I don't like the glasses. In retrospect, I should not have put them on there, but it's done. So if you look at how I did it, you'll see that there is line weight like around the arms and so forth. So you start out with the 005, and then you can go to a 1, which it still has a sharp point to it. And just add a little bit of line weight to that. Now, obviously, I can continue to work on this for hours and add more shading and more shading and possibly mess it up. Or I could just stop right here, which is what I choose to do. So, um, one thing I want to point out when you're doing like straps and so forth around the arm, if my arm is like here, this is my arm, make sure the straps actually, they don't come like this. Make sure you take them, actually take them off of the arm like that. Because I, I've noticed a lot of people, they'll just, their straps will be just like skin tight. If it's if it's a design element and it's just like the paint, the, the way the suit is painted or, or stitched or whatever, that's fine. But if you're trying to draw like wristbands or something, make sure they come off of the arm just a little bit. They don't have to come off way off here, but just bring them off just a little bit past wherever that line is that way people will know that you have that those are added bands so uh, I'm guessing that's gonna be it for this I said I was gonna do a, whatever so I can do you know this he could be outside he could be anywhere just draw a line to show that you know he's not floating in space and I, I could have done the, the little cartridges but I, I wanted to get this done because, as I say, I don't like to spend too much time on one picture. It just, you know, because my brain is like, I need to finish this one. I have an idea for that one. So, but that's just me. So, if you like you, what I'm showing you, please, a couple things. Tell friends. Tell you, If you're an artist, you have artist friends. Tell some friends about it. Send them the link. Uh, give me a thumbs up so YouTube will know that I'm doing some good stuff and can boost my rankings. And leave a comment. Tell me what you um, want to see next. You know, might be some things that you want to learn how to do that you're not finding on any other channel. And a lot of other channels don't listen to requests. I try to help people because my goal is to get you to become a good artist, the next artist out there. All right, that's going to be it for me. No rambling. I will see you guys in the next video. Keep drawing. And yeah, remember, if it's not fun to do, then it's not fun. If you're not having fun doing it, then it's not fun. Something like that, yeah. Anyway, I'm out.